RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Fred Allen, production It's in the Bag, director Richard Wallace... Hollywood screen directors present a play on mirth and murder. Tonight, for the first time on the air, the motion picture comedy, It's in the Bag, starring Fred Allen in his original role of Fred Flugel. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, the star usually tells the story of his life. Well, the story of my life can be told very briefly. I was born, obviously. I lived, and I'm here tonight. Our story tonight can also be told very briefly. It's in the Bag is a murder mystery... And the name of the killer is Monty the Goner. Well, that's, that's all there is to the story. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night. Good night. Oh. Thank you very much. Hey, M- Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen. Monty the Goner, what, uh, what's on your mind? Ain't you gonna let me kill nobody? Well, not, no, not tonight, Monty. Hey, you can't get away with this, Allen. I got a contract with Murder Incorporated. Really? If I don't kill somebody in this program, the union will pull out every murder show on the network. Well, gee, I didn't know you were organized that well, Monty. We don't want any trouble. No picketing. All right, we'll go ahead with the program. Jimmy Wallington, will you set the scene, please? All right, Fred. Ladies and gentlemen, It's in the Bag is the story of Fred Flugel, a flea trainer who lived a simple life with his wife, his son, and his fleas. As our story opens, we find our hero in front of his combination flea circus at home, going about his business. Hurry, 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 folks. See the greatest flea circus of all time. See Sandow, the mighty strongman flea. See Rockefeller, the richest flea in the world. Rockefeller saved his money and retired and bought himself his own dog. Now, just a minute. Just a minute, Junior. Where's your ticket? What ticket, Pop? I'm your son, Homer. Oh, I thought you were one of the fleas with the hat on. Excuse me, son. (laughs) Say, what have you got in that bag? Nothing, Pop. Let me see. Why, you little saboteur, your father's a flea trainer, and you're coming home with a jar of insecticide. Oh, Ma, help! Fred, I sent Homer for that insecticide. Tell him, Ma. My mother warned me not to marry a flea trainer. A flea trainer. I won't always be a flea trainer. There are millionaires in my family. One moth-eaten millionaire. Homer, don't talk that way about my uncle. One of these days, my Uncle Trumbull may make out his will in my favor and drop dead. That's what I say, Flugel. Drop dead. (laughs) Monty, the goner. Fred Flugel, have you been playing the horses again? Eve. Just because my bookmaker is here with a blackjack in one hand and an open razor in the other hand, does that mean I'm playing the horses? How much do you owe him? Uh, eight bucks. Now, don't worry, Mrs. Flugel. Oh, I'm not worrying. If Pop don't pay you money, can I watch you break his ribs? Eh, who needs his ribs? I need them. How will I look walking around in my bare lungs? (laughs) Flugel, from now on, you have got unlimited credit with me. Just look at this story in tonight's paper. Is this the paper? Let me see. Millionaire dies of acute indigestion. Trumbull Flugel leaves nephew Fred Flugel $12 million. $12 million? (gasps) No more fleas. We can live in luxury. Luxury is right. From now on, we'll all wear underwear. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, one at a time. Mr. Flugel, you've ordered a 20-room mansion for your wife. I know. You ordered a rhinestone Cadillac for yourself. Yeah, how about something for your little boy? Have you got a nice, sharp bear trap? (laughs) Well, I got one with four prongs. I'll take it. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. This may be my bookmaker. Hello? Yes, Monty? I'm betting 500 on Flying Max across the board at Belmont. No, I know. I, yes, I know. That's 10000 I owe you. Uh, my uncle's money? Well, no, I haven't got it yet. But this afternoon, I'm seeing my uncle's lawyer, Mr. Jefferson T. Pike. Please be 
seated, Mr. Plugel. Well, thank you, Mr. Pike. As your late uncle's lawyer, I'm sorry to inform you that there has been an unexpected development. Unexpected development? I'm still heir to my uncle's estate, sir. Oh, oh, yes, yes, indeed. But I'm afraid, Mr. Plugel, that the estate isn't quite the $12 million the paper said it was. Well, what did my uncle leave me? Four antique chairs. Four antique chairs? Mr. Pike, what happened to that $12 million? Your uncle had an unfortunate vice. What was it? He played pinball machines. Well, how could my uncle lose $12 million playing pinball machines? He tilted. Uh... (laughs) Eve, Eve, where's that can of insecticide? I'm going to end it all. Oh, cheer up, Fred. It could be worse. Worse? How could it be worse? I lost $12 million. I owe for a mansion, a rhinestone Cadillac that I can't pay for, Flying Max ran last at Belmont. And I got my hand caught in a bear trap. Who is it? The expressman. I got four chairs here for Mr. Flugel. Take them away. Feed them to the termites. But, Pop, those chairs are Louis Fourteenth. Tell Louis to come and get them out of here. <laughs> Look, maybe, maybe I can raise some money on him, Pop. How, Homer? Finley's auction parlor sells antiques like these for 50 bucks. Hey, four chairs, 50 bucks, that's $200. Homer, get down to Finley's with those chairs. Okay, Pop. $200. Eve, where's my racing form? Fred, are you crazy? You owe Monty the gun of $10,000 now. Where's... Come in. Fred Flugel? Yes? I'm Public Eye Perkins. You're a policeman? Yeah. Fred Flugel, you're suspected of murder. Whose murder? Trumbull Flugel. He was your uncle. I know he was my uncle, but he died of indigestion. Something he ate. What he ate was insecticide. Insecticide? Your uncle was poisoned. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Why would Fred kill his own uncle? Who was left $12 million in his uncle's will? Fred Flugel. $12 million? All I got was four chairs. Four chairs, eh? Flugel, before public eye Perkins is through with you, you won't need no chairs. No? You'll need a hammock. A hammock? Flugel, you're gonna swing. (laughs) This is ridiculous. Trying to make me a murder suspect? Well, what are you worried about? They're trying to make me a widow. Yes? Fred Flugel? Yes? I'm from the last National Bank. The last National Bank? (laughs) Your Uncle Trouble left this package to be delivered to you after his death. Side here. There you are. Thank you. Fred, from the bank. It must be money. Money, money, Eve. I'll tear it open. Well, I'll be... Look at this. A phonograph record. Some estate. Four chairs and a phonograph record. A phonograph. Well, we might as well play it. With my luck, it'll probably be Margaret Truman singing Mule Train. (laughs) Here, put the record on the machine. All right. I get the needle down here. Dear nephew, this is your Uncle Trumbull. My Uncle Trumbull? Yes, I am speaking to you from the grave. But, Uncle... Quiet, please, I'm talking. (laughs) Yes, sir. If I died under suspicious circumstances, you must bring my murderer to justice. Yes, sir. The evidence has been concealed along with $300,000. Where? It is in one of the four chairs I left you in my will. Avenge me, my boy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye, Uncle Uncle Trumbull. Eve, $300,000. It's in the chairs. Where are the chairs? What happened to those chairs? Congratulate me, Pop. I sold them. You sold what? The chairs. Finley auctioned them off. So, my own son steals four chairs and sells them to a crooked antique dealer. (laughs) Who bought them? Who bought those chairs? What's all the excitement? Excitement? I haven't got a cent to my name. I owe Monty the gun of $10,000, and I'm accused of murder. The only thing that can save me is the $300,000 and the evidence in one of those chairs. Homer, do you realize what will happen to your father? Yes, Homer. If I don't get the right chair... You'll get the electric chair. <laughs> Listening to the Screen Directors Playhouse production of It's in the Bag, starring Fred Allen, and presented by RCA Victor. I'll tell you something else that's in the bag. 
that quality television set you've been wishing you could afford. When you see the amazingly low price tags on RCA Victor's 14 brand new 1950 television models, you'll realize that money need no longer stand between you and your true love. Let's say you have roughly what two or three years ago would have bought only a 10-inch open-face console. Today it can buy one of the most beautiful 16-inch consoles ever created, the TC-168. This console has a cabinet of exquisite provincial design with paneled cathedral doors. In appearance, it's like a masterpiece out of the 18th century. And in performance, it's like a masterpiece out of the 21st century. For the pictures you see on its wide 16-inch screen seem to have leaped half a century in brightness and clarity. This beautiful console is typical of the 14 new televisions of delight waiting for you right now at your RCA Victor dealers. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of It's in the Bag, starring Fred Allen in his original role of Fred Flugel. <laughs> Trouble still pursues Fred Flugel, ex-flea trainer, ex-millionaire. Accused of his uncle's murder, penniless, in debt to a heartless bookmaker, Flugel has summoned his late uncle's lawyer, Jefferson T. Pike, to his home. Have you any other suggestions, Mr. Pike? Well, Mr. Uh, Pike, if I were in your boots, I'd confess. Confess what? I'm not guilty. Oh, 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 oh not guilty. <laughs> How many times have I heard my clients say that, even as I was helping the warden strap them in the electric chair? <laughs> but surely, Mr. Pike, you don't think my husband is guilty. Until I get my retainer, madam, every client is guilty. <laughs> Mr. Pike... You'll get your retainer. As soon as Finley's auction parlor finds those four chairs, I'll have the evidence and $300,000. $300,000? I'll start preparing your defense immediately. Are you going back to the office? No, I'm going down to Finley's auction parlor. Well, happy mandamus. Some lawyer. When he gets through with this case, one of the chairs will go to the chair. Come in. Hello, Flugel. Monty the Goniff again. Flugel? There is a difference between you and me. What's the difference, Monty? Ten thousand dollars. Now, look, look, Monty. You and that phony newspaper story, your uncle dying, leaving you twelve million dollars. But, Monty... If I don't get my money by six o'clock tonight, there's going to be another difference between you and me. What difference? I'm going to be living. <laughs> Monty, you'll get your money. I'll have $300,000. $300,000? When? As soon as I find that chair. I'm waiting to hear from Finley's auction parlor now. Okay, Flugel. Give me a ring. Where will you be? At Finley's auction parlor. Eve, I've got to get that money before 6 o'clock. I wonder what's keeping Homer. Come in. Public Eye Perkins. Just checking up, Flugel. I never lose sight of a murder suspect. But Fred didn't commit the murder. No. Oh, no, his uncle didn't die from playing leapfrog. Uh, look, Perkins, I can prove that I'm innocent. Oh. As soon as I find the evidence. And where's the evidence? It's in one of the chairs with $300,000. $300,000? We're waiting to hi hear from Finley's auction parlor now. Okay, Flugel, I'm closing in. On the murderer? No, on Finley's auction parlor. <laughs> Dad, finding that chair is going to buy, be like looking for a lost tooth at an Elks convention. Oh, the telephone. Maybe it's good news. I hope so. Hello? This is Homer, Pop. Eve, it's Homer. What did he find out? Homer, did you find out who bought the chairs? Finding that chair is going to be like looking for a lost tooth at an Elks convention. Homer, we already told that joke. <laughs> you weren't here. Oh, well, Finley is trying to remember who bought the chairs at the auction. Well, tell Finley to concentrate. Tell Finley to try and remember one at a time. Well, he says some guy came in and bought the first chair for a prize in a radio program. A giveaway program? Yeah, it's called Break the Sponsor. So long, Pop. Nice work, Homer. Eve, one of those chairs is on a quiz show. Where's my hat? Fred, a radio quiz. They'll ask you a million questions. Eve, for $300,000, I've got all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Break the Sponsor. And now our next contestant. And what is your name, sir? Fred uh, Flugel, senior. Uh, what is your occupation, Mr. Flugel? Well, I'm a flea trainer. And how did you become a flea trainer? I started from scratch. <laughs> Well, Mr. Bluga, what category have you chosen? Uh, geography, sir. That's very good. Are you ready for the first question? As the flea said when he jumped on the dog, I'll bite. <laughs> Why, Mr. Flugel, you're funnier than Arthur Godfrey. Who isn't? <laughs> All right, Mr. Flugel, here's our first question. Where is the capital of the United States? Most of it is in Europe. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Flugel. You've won the jumbo jackpot oh, prize. Oh, good for me, sir. Good yes, sir. And now, sir, you can have your choice of any piece of merchandise on the stage. Well, I'll take that uh, in the corner there, that Louis the Fourteenth chair. Uh, wouldn't you rather have this uh, turtleneck raccoon coat? No, no, I'll, I'd rather have the, the chair. Well, uh, how about a lifetime supply of Venetian blind? Oh, I wouldn't live long enough to raise them. No, I'd rather have the chair. <laughs> Well, uh, how about a two-week trip to Death Valley, complete with pallbearers? <laughs> no, no. Look, just uh, no other prizes, if you don't mind. Just the jumbo. Leave out the jackpot. All I want is that Louis the Fourteenth chair. Louis the Fourteenth. Hey, Mr. Flugel, what do you want with that old chair? I am going to take it apart. How? I am going to hit you over the head with it. Oh, ow! Gad, there's nothing here. It's the wrong chair. The wrong chair. There's no evidence. No $300,000. $300,000? You hit me on the head to get $300,000? I'm sorry, sir. Sorry! Mr. Flugel, you've just invented radio's newest game. Hit the announcer on the head. Win a case prize. There's millions in it. Oh, millions! <laughs> Well, Homer, I'm certainly glad you called us on the phone. Well, there was nothing in the first chair, huh, Pop? No, it was a waste of time. I won the jumbo jackpot, but I got the chair. There was nothing in it. Did really? you get any more information out of Finley? Yeah. He says he sold the second chair to Dr. Klutz, a psychiatrist. Klutz? How do you spell Klutz? With a small K, do you know? K-L-U-T-Z, I think. Klutz, have you got the... Give me that psychiatrist's address, Homer. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Klutz, uh, I'm here by appointment, sir. My name is uh, Fred... My name is Fred Flugel. Just lie down on the couch, Mr. Flugel. <laughs> but, doctor, I, I came to see you about a chair. Uh, Mr. Flugel, you come to a psychiatrist, you lie down on the couch. <laughs> Chairs is for midgets. Well, no, no, I'm not a, a midget, as you could see if you have your glasses on. You don't understand, Doctor. Doctor, I have a problem. Uh, put it on the couch. <laughs> well, all right, I'll lie down. Just yeah. let me relax a second, Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Doctor, I am in trouble. You think you got troubles? Get up from the couch. <laughs> Why? Let me lie down. <laughs> Now I will tell you some troubles. All right. Last week, one of my patients, a stock salesman, yes. is saying to me, Dr. Klotz, because that's my name, yes. Dr. Klotz, <laughs> invest all of your money with me. Uh -huh. Together, we will dig an oil well. An oil well? And yeah. you lost everything in the oil well? Today, I don't know my money from a hole in the ground. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. You, you, you want to hear more troubles, Flugel? No, no, Dr. Klutz. All I want to do is examine this Louis XIV chair in the corner here. Gad, it's the wrong chair. There's nothing in it. But you ripped it to pieces. It's all right. Don't lose your head, Doctor. I'll send you a, chair, a check for $25 to have it reupholstered. Uh, $25 they get for upholstery? Yes, Doctor. Doctor, where are you going? Goodbye, psychiatry. Hello, upholstery. <laughs> Eve, that psychiatrist was a waste of time. Klutz, remind me not to go to him in the future. All right, now, don't take off your hat. 
Homer just phoned from the auction parlor. Good. Finley found the third chair? Yes. It was sold to a gypsy mind reader named Sarah the Psychic. <laughs> Some customers go to this auction parlor. Madam, you, you are Sarah the Psychic? Fred Flugel, I could tell you all the secrets of the past, present, and the future. If only... If only what? If only I could remember where I put my crystal ball. Well, look, Sarah the Psychic, uh, maybe you could fake it. I am Sarah the Psychic... <laughs> I am here... You do not have to tell me why you are here. I can read your mind. Oh, I didn't realize my skull was that thin. <laughs> you came for a chair. Uncanny. Fred Flugel. Yes? Sarah the psychic knows all. The chair is empty. You mean I came here for nothing? Not for nothing, kid. That'll be $15. Fifteen dollars. Five dollars for reading your mind. And? Ten dollars for reading the chair. What's new, Pop? Homer, there was nothing in the third chair either. Then it must be in the chair the guy just brought back here to Finley's. The fourth chair. Homer, bring that chair home at once. Pop, I haven't got any money. Homer, look, listen to your father carefully. All right. Here's what you do. Breathe on Finley's glasses. He'll think he's in Los Angeles. <laughs> Grab that chair and run. Is Pop the last chair. Ah, and that chair is $300,000 and the evidence against my uncle's killer. Don't touch that chair, Flugel. Pop, it's Monty the Garnet. But Monty, the $10,000 I owe you is in that chair. Flugel, I'm taking all the loot, the whole 300 grand. Stand aside. Don't move, Monty the Garnet. I got you covered. Public Eye Perkins, what a capture. Flugel, you're under arrest too. I'm taking you in for the theft of this chair from Findlay's auction parlor. Drop that gun, Perkins. Fred, it's your uncle's lawyer. Jefferson T. Pike. I'm taking that chair, Flugel, and the money and the evidence. The evidence? Then you, Jefferson T. Pike, you are my uncle's murderer. Well, that's impossible. Why? Because at the beginning of the program, you said the murderer was Monty the Garner. Well, that, Mr. Pike, was to throw you off the track. You murdered Uncle Trumbull because you knew that he knew that you were stealing from his estate. The only proof of that is in the bottom of this chair. Nobody move! I'm going to rip off the lining, and then I'll... Oh! Grab his gun, Pop! I've got it, Homer. Now, Mr. Jefferson T. Pike, up with your hand. I can't! Take it off! Take it off! Take what off? He's caught in my bear trap! Homer, you mean... Oh, sure, Pop. I saw all three of these guys snooping around in back of Finley's auction parlor, so when I brought the chair back here, I put the trap in the lining, just in case. Public eye, Perkins, you in person, sir, take them away. Oh, boy, two of them, my first double dandy capture. <laughs> Well, Eve, with Pike and Monty out of the way, there's nothing to prevent us, Homer and all of us, from enjoying Uncle Trumbull's money. Oh, thanks, Pop. Haul it out of the chair. I'm just going to do that this very minute, son. Now, let me see. Why, there's nothing in here but an old envelope. It must be a bank draft. No, it isn't, Eve. It's a letter. Listen, my dear nephew... In my phonograph record, I forgot to say that the $300,000 would not be in cash. It is tied up in a murder story I wrote, which I am sure that you can sell to the movies. The name of my story is It's in the Bag, and it starts with a fella standing in front of a flea circus yelling, Hurry, 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 folks! See the greatest flea circus of all time! Oh, no! We don't have to go through all that again! No, Homer. As one Siamese twin said to the other one as they prepared to sit down, this is the end for both of us. <laughs> You have just heard the last act of It's in the Bag. Our star, Fred Allen, and our guest screen director, Richard Wallace, will be with us in just a moment. In weeks to come, on Screen Director's Playhouse, you'll be entertained by such other great stars as Bob Hope, Jane Russell, Joseph Cotton, and Kirk Douglas. And next Friday, a brilliant young actress brings a well-remembered performance to Screen Director's Playhouse. Our story for the first time on the air is Incendiary Blonde. 
and recreating her original role will be Betty Hutton with screen director George Marshall. Now, here again is tonight's star, Fred Allen. Fred, you always have your finger on the nation's pulse, so I suppose you know the big news in recorded music, that RCA Victor's new 45 RPM system is sweeping the country, that RCA Victor is making over 65,000 automatic record changers and over 2 million records every month, and people are still yelling for more. Well, that's just what my RCA Victor dealer in New York tells me, Jimmy. He claims the 45 is a mob collector. Every morning, he just unlocks the door and jumps back out of the way. What do you think accounts for this swing to the 45? Well, I can only tell you what swang me, Jimmy. What is that, friend? The small, says a minor executive, Luke, <laughs> pulling some <laughs> the thing that's The thing that swung me, Jimmy, <laughs> is the small size of the 45 records, that's what. My big 78 records were driving me out of house and home. I had a stack of records eight feet high in the back of my clothes closet, and whenever I reached for a necktie, I was always running my head through a tune and vice versa. <laughs> yes, you're right, Fred. The 45s are so tiny, you can line up 150 records on one foot of bookshelf. How many do you have? Oh, about three feet and a couple of toes, I'd say, <laughs> offhand. I, mean. I suppose you judged the musical qualities of the 45 before going in for it so heavily. Yes, I did, uh, uh, indeed, Jimmy. I replied the Jack, or as I prefer to say, the Yasha test of musical quality. The Yasha test? What's that, Fred? Why, Jimmy, it consists of four questions which all real music lovers always ask about any record system. Is Yasha Heifetz on it? Is Yasha Benny not on it? <laughs> Is Yasha Eigen for it? <laughs> well, the answer to all those questions is Yasha. Really? Seriously, Fred, though. <laughs> the, I'll be closing the, the curtains again. <laughs> well, Fred, I was about to mention that the 45 gives you a wealth of music yes. with the finest tone quality ever achieved in recording. Over 2,100 titles by the world's greatest artists and the stars who make the hits. Say, so, wait a minute. Wasn't there a fourth Yasha question? Yes, Jimmy. Does this system save a man any Yasha? I mean, Jack, translated. Oh, why, yes, Fred. The 45 is the least expensive automatic record changer ever made. Prices start as low as $12.95 for the record changer, $29.95 for the Victrola 45, and records as low as 46 cents. Friends, there's every reason in the world to visit your RCA Victor dealers and join the swing to the 45. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, many of you have wondered uh, what a screen director really does. Well, when a studio makes a picture like it's in the bag and the star leaves town in a hurry, the screen director is the fellow who stays in Hollywood and takes the blame. And just when people are beginning to forget about it, somebody says, folks, I'd like to have you meet the director of It's in the Bag and the creator of such fine films as Shop Worn Angel and Tycoon, Mr. Richard Wallace. Thanks, friend. You know, I haven't seen you in any other pictures since it's in the bag. Well, Dick, Hollywood had me. Hollywood threw me uh, back to radio. And that's how people started watching television. Fred, I thought you were fine in pictures. Well, those are very kind words, Richard, from a man who's directed over 100 movies. Tell me, uh, confidentially, how did I photograph? Fred, our handsomest leading men have to be especially photographed to find their best camera angles. We never had that trouble with you. You didn't? No matter how we photographed you, uh, it, uh... I know. I was all angles. Well, Dick, next time we make a picture together, you can photograph me with a sack over my head, and we can call it, It's in the Bag Again. Okay, Fred. But next time, I'll leave town, and you take the blame. It's a deal. Good night, Dick. Good night, Fred. Good night, everyone. And good night to you, Fred Allen and Richard Wallace. Remember next Friday, Betty Hutton in Incendiary Blonde with screen director George Marshall, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. It's in the Bag was presented through the courtesy of Skirball Manning, producers of Bride for Sale, starring Claudette Colbert, Robert Young, and George Brent. Richard Wallace's latest production is A Kiss for Callers, starring Shirley Temple. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Friday when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Betty Hutton, production Incendiary Blonde, director George Marshall. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.